and implications of men that are under demonic spiritual powers by women. Yes, and it's been a great demand for that teaching. And uh, I'm going to postpone that for next week, Saturday. But today I've had to divert to today's topic. And today's topic is the revelation of forgiveness. It's something that really needs to be uh, taught, understood, and practiced. Because there are many people, and, and, and again, these teachings come about for the most part, definitely by the Holy Spirit. But, for the, for, but, but additionally, there are people who will constantly ask me questions and email me and so on on these different topics. So based on that popular demand, also, I would just create a teaching from it. Now, I've had a lot of people that would say to me, but Kevin, uh, uh, um, does forgiveness mean that if I forgive someone, I, I still have to be buddy with them and I still have to, 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 to be friends with them? Or they would say to me, well, I forgive, but I forget what they do. And then, of course, they take me down to 1906 when something happened and all this stuff. And to be honest with you, <laughs> I got kind of upset because I'm listening to these people with their emails, their face-to-face -face stories, and all of them trying to give me their conditions in regard to forgiveness. But for some reason, it's like we just program to dismiss what our leader says as it relates to these matters. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, normally what I do when I teach I normally take you through a cadre of scriptures to build a foundation off of those scriptures. And then I would find a particular story in the Bible where all of the biblical points that I would have given throughout the journey and getting to the story would be present in this one story. Well, today I'm going to do quite the opposite. I'm going to take you to a story in regards to forgiveness. And we're going to read it in its detail about this particular person. And then we're going to go and see what our leader, how much of what this person did in regards to forgiving uh, others, how much it, it correlates with the master's plan. Okay, there are no conditions to forgiveness. All right, you either forgive or you did not forgive. And whenever somebody say, well, 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 I, whenever there's conditions, that means you haven't truly forgiven. Now, this is not to say in any regard that forgiveness means to continue the friendship. No, forgiveness means we're clearing the air in where we had this disagreement. We are either we're agreeing to disagree or we're coming to some form of resolve. This is the key in this teaching today, with the hope that this would never come back up again. Because I cannot see you saying you forgive some old Kevin. I don't. And I hear this, listen, I hear this so much, it's almost like a recitation. Kevin, I, 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 I forgive them. I can be real Kevin, but gee, what they did to me, uh-huh, okay, what did they do to you? They lied on me. They cost me get fired. And they could come up with some of the most egregious things that they feel warrants or justify them having a conditional forgiveness for this particular person. I find every person that approaches forgiveness that way a super hypocrite. That's, that's what I said. You are a super hypocrite to the third power. And I'm going to tell you why. This God who you claim to believe in, okay, his son Jesus, the Bible that you claim to pattern your life from as much as you possibly can, right? Now, Let's say that person did you something last year or even 10 years ago, all right? How long have you been in this world now? 40 years, 30, 50, 60? Okay. And you've been asking for forgiveness from your God for how many years now? 30, 40, 50, 60 years? Okay. Now, this person who did this wrong to you, when did this happen again? Okay, 10. Okay, you know what? Let's go back 20 years ago. 20 years ago. 20 years ago. And you could remember what they did to you to the letter. But before they did it, and after they did it, when you lied, you fornicated, you steal, cheated, you moved that money, nobody saw you, God saw you, he, he has a record of it. All of the, the, the wickedness you did, 
And when you call in your bed at night or whenever, Father God, please forgive me. Forgive me for my sins, Lord. Forgive me for having sex with my brother's wife, Jesus. Oh, Lord, forgive me for the abortions that I had, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, Father, forgive me for, for all of the lies that I told on my co-worker and conspired and got him or her fired. And it hurts my heart to see them out there struggling, Jesus, all because I, Father, forgive me for the old bear I plant in people yard and throw graveyard dust all over the place, Jesus. Forgive me, Jesus. Watch this, watch this. You do this over and over. And according to you, because I can straighten you out today, God forgave you, right? Or at least you would hope he did. But this person who did you, this one matter, this one matter that happened way back in 1980, Every time this poison name come back, I don't care how much Alzheimer's or dementia you got, somehow you are able to retain this particular piece of info. Boy, I remember, my God, in 1982, Tuesday, October 5th, it was a cold day, mighty God. That's when Kevin, my, him, <laughs> Christian, my foot, that's the evilest dude in this world. You could remember that. And you feel just, but the same God, the same God, who you just flip out in church and somersault, swing on the chandelier, huh? Do all of the foolishness you do in there with your hypocrite self. You want him to forgive you of the three billion sins you did. But this one matter. You know how many people in hellfire on broil today who did all of the performances you did in church? Who used to, used to read the passage of scripture for pastor? Uh huh. Had the Holy Ghost every 30 seconds. Do you know they're in hell today? But Kevin, that ain't no true. Not Sister Susie and Mary, then, who had the power every 30 seconds. Yeah, them do. Why? Because they refuse to let go. They refuse. They, Satan has convinced them that you are justified. You have a right to feel this way. You have a right to don't speak to this poison. You have a right to make life difficult for them and their children and anyone related to them. You have a right to be offended. Don't worry, but God will forgive you for whatever you do though. You could send lie, keep on the road of stealing and cheating and robbing your, your, your employees of their wages. Don't pay national insurance. You could do that. God will forgive you according to your demented mind. But that poison, who did that wickedness to me? It's unforgivable. As usual, I could shut this show down right now. Because if that don't convict your wicked heart, I don't know what will. Clearly you are in, you have now uh, upgraded to the stage of a reprobate mind that you, you, I, I find you to be the most hypocritical evil human ever. And you could tell everybody how wrong they are and you can tell this, no, 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 child, you need to go forgive that man. That man, forgive him. But you refuse to, you, your, your sister left this, uh, your brother left this, uh, you and your wicked behind screaming and crying all over that grave, knowing you didn't speak to that person for 20 years. They should hold you down to that funeral that will you right there for your lies. See, listen, y'all know I don't play. I don't hold back. And I am as raw as they come. See, I don't play games. Y'all preachers that make can tell y'all this, but I can tell y'all this. All of y'all need to get saved. Every last one of y'all need to accept Jesus. Because what we are about to look into today, unforgiveness, I'm telling you right now, if we could do a percentage as to why most people are in hell today, it ain't because of the big ticket sense like fornication and, 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 and murder and stuff. No, 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 no. No, unforgiveness, unforgiveness. People refuse, so many people are angry and bitter. And what it does, as you're about to see in this teaching, it, it suspends your life. You could never live, you could never enjoy your life because of what your ex-husband did, what your ex-wife did. Huh? Your life ain't moving on. Well, Kevin, what you mean my life ain't moving on and I have a new house and a new job and I doing better than you? It's a liar physically on the outside. But you can't enjoy what you have because every time that man or woman name comes up, every time you see a first cousin of them or whoever, that cycle start all over again. Yeah, they thought I wouldn't make it. Look at me today. Now look at him. Huh. I'll never forget what he did to me. I will never forget. Well, oh, Lord, here we go again. 
Here we go with this record again. When are you going to break this record? Huh? Huh? When are we going to destroy the needle so this record don't play anymore? Please, help us, Jesus. Deliver us from this poison. Over and over. Come on, I'm talking to somebody today. You all know what I'm talking about. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking to you, hypocrite. <laughs> it's you I'm talking to. Get saved. Get saved. There's room at the cross for you. Come to know Jesus because you don't know him. And he never forgave you. Every time, let me jump over to the blocks. Every time you ask God for forgiveness for whatever you did, but you never forgave your brother, but God never forgave you. Somebody need to hear this message today because you could be weeks away from your own funeral. You could be hours away. And you believe because you follow the tradition of going to church every Sunday, the tradition of going to Bible study every Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever you go, the tradition of being an attendee at all of your conferences and conclave, you believe that qualify you, that you are the assistant pastor, the pastor, or you are a lay minister. Why well, like you get from Anya because none of those things I see in scripture that if you are any of those titles, this exempt you from God's law. The Bible is crystal clear. He says, forgive others. Why? Why? Is, is this a condition? Yeah, yes. And the condition is so that your heavenly father can forgive you. Very simple. So Kevin, are you saying to me, all them times I mess up in life and I repent it to God, even though I quoted in my prayer as a part of my repentance, 1 John 1 and 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You're telling me God never forgave No, tell me something. No, he did not forgive you, you hypocrite. Because he also said in this word, a condition again, he said, forgive your fellow man, forgive your brother, so that, listen, so that your heavenly father can forgive you. Now, what is the prerequisite to the kingdom of heaven? Uh, you need to get saved. Uh huh. And what does being saved requires? What's what that mean? That means you must confess my you must confess your sins and that God will now God must approve it by forgiving you, right? Uh huh. Okay. Now, what is the only condition in the Bible to God forgiving you of your sins? The only condition. Well, it says that I must forgive my fellow man. Uh huh. Okay. Did you forgive your uncle? Who molests you? Now see there, Kevin, you see that you don't understand these things, okay? This is a sensitive issue. No, 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 no. I'm very sensitive to it. You, you're not, stop making, stop putting barriers in your way to stop yourself from going to the kingdom of God that you claim you're working your way to go to. I didn't make these rules. Whether you were molested, whether you were raped, whether you were treated as the black sheep of the family, whether your husband had 568 children outside of the marriage while you all were in a marriage together, whether your wife did it, whether they embarrassed you, lied on you, you got fired, whether you were shot, whatever it is, and you're still alive, unfortunately, none of those excuses would, be, would qualify God to alter his rules just for you, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you cannot say, God, listen, I didn't forgive Kevin because what he did was very hurtful and I was offended. Okay. And he's going to say, okay, I hear you, you know, and I'm going to give you a chance at this. Now, show me in my rules. Show me in my Bible. Show it to me. I can give you a break here. Show it to me in the Bible where I said, if your fellow brother did something, okay, that you deem was not forgivable. I was still able, I will still forgive you, even though you didn't forgive him, and now you could just cruise your way up to the pearly gates. Show, show it to me, and heaven will be your home. Show it to me. I will see it right now. Because I could show you saints who have experienced worse atrocities than you, but was able to forgive and move on with their natural lives, and by extension, their spiritual lives, now they're seated on the right hand of me. Now you show me, what is it about you that I, God, should alter, augment my rules just for you? See, Kevin, I didn't want to go there, but, but daddy raped me, daddy touched me. Again, you're not listening to me, you know. 
show me in the scripture that if daddy rape you, mommy molest you, think of the most vile thing ever. Show me the sub clause, show me the article 1.26 under the section of forgiveness where these are the only conditions you could not forgive and still have your heavenly father forgive you. Show it to me. I'm listening to all ears and all I could hear is crickets. Show it to me. See, I play with y'all today. Y'all could play with each other all day and talk foolishness and jump around, but y'all got Holy Ghost and fluttering. I don't know how you have Holy Ghost every 30 seconds and still get up and unforgiveness. How does this work? Someone could please email me and tell me how, how you do that. How do you flip boat, speak in 900 tongues, right? Somersault, you could do all that. Swing on the chandelier, okay? Like some kind of gymnast, but at the end of all of that exercise and charade, you still capable of holding that level of resentment and hate to the extent you refuse to forgive how you do that mighty listen that is powerful how do you do that I, I, could someone email me call dove tell me how is that possible i don't think science or the medical doctors could figure that out how you you on the ground fluttering with the power of the devil because it couldn't be god the power of satan all over you because it could not be Jesus. Jesus did all of that to you. The Holy Spirit did all of that to you. But you still get up. I, I hate my pastor. I can't stand first lady. Wow. And the Holy Spirit tell you to tell me. I must get my life right. Well, what is this? Jesus, Lord, please come. Please come, Lord. Because they refuse that room at the cross for them. <laughs> I don't get it. I getting real today because you all too no good. <laughs> Listen to this. You telling me. You see why people don't take church serious? You telling me. You you on the job from Monday to Friday oppressing people, doing them in, and then you in church. Holy hands, Jesus. I feel the power right now. Hallelujah. Boy, look here. Whatever devil that is hovering over that place you call church, I don't want. I don't even go on that road. No. I don't. If, if, if someone say, Listen, come by me. I live right by this particular old buddy. Take a charter flight to the first corner. I'll pick you up there, but I ain't coming to that road there because that place full of devils. No way. And this is why I'm telling you all, stop playing with God. Stop it. Stop playing with God. If you have not forgiven your mother, if you have not forgiven your father, your friend, your brother, your cousin, if you have not forgiven your uncle, your whoever it is that you feel, and how do you know, Kevin, how do you know I didn't forgive them? Then stop talking about it. Stop it. Just like racism. Racism will never end in the world till somebody come together, people, and say, you know what? We're going to stop talking about it. We're going to stop fueling it. We're going to stop reminding each other of it. And now we're going to work to be different about it. Let's, let's behave in the manner in which we want. Don't stop going back to the past. I, I forget them. I mean, I, it's all right. I forgive them, but oh, Lord. Every time I think about it, here we go again. Same record, different day, different hour. But I can hear the same thing over and over and over and over. Over and over and over again. Hypocrite. Why, why, why are you hypocrite, Kevin? Because they can tell me all the wrong what this one particular person did to them. But they have no recollection of the wrong that they have done to other people. Well, what is this? Father, please come. These people are serious. Please come, Father. So anyway, let me quickly go into my sponsors. I didn't do my sponsors in the last couple of weeks because I had so much to cover with that series uh, that we were dealing with. Uh, Entertainment DVD and Snacks, Town Center, 3526954, for all of your delicious hot dogs, variety of patties, beef, jerk, and curry chicken, cheesy beef, spinach, and vegetable patties. They also have DVD movies and snacks. And an arrangement of soft drinks. They're located again at the Town Center Mall, 3526954 where Mr. Tony and Angela Pellman will be more than happy to assist you. Tico's Fashion Men's Stores, for all of your casual men's need, for your uncle, brother, husband, nephew, cousin, you name it. They're located on Kent Street, and that's the street right between uh, where they are and the rear of the post office. Their number is 352-3394. 3523394, where Mr. Gary Hill and his lovely family will be more than happy to assist you. That's Tico's 
fashions a men's store for all of your casual needs short pants long pants short sleeve shirt long sleeve shirt nice design of clothing give them a call once again at three five two three three nine four pick here beauty center pick here beauty center for you females who want to get a nice hairdo or a nice refresher and the proprietors miss marcia pick stock they specialize in hair care and wraps bonding short pixie haircut hair weaving, ponytail, sculptured styles, and they're also located at the Town Center Mall. The number is 352-2220. That's 352-2220, or you can contact on our mobile or cell phone, which is 533-9326. And that's Pick Here Beauty Center, located at Town Center Mall. Marcia Pickstock is the beautician slash proprietor Three five two 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 zero and five three three nine three two six. Simply the best for all of your multimedia needs: audio, video, funerals, private parties, weddings, you name it. We want to stream from your church now because of this COVID thing, or you want to stream for those family members that could not make to the funeral because of all of the rules and regulations, or even a wedding. Give Simply the Best a call at 727-1502, 727-1502. Again, for all your multimedia needs, all of your streaming needs, you want to stream your church service, uh, whatever it is, you want to stream to YouTube, Facebook, whatever, they can do it for you, 727-1502. You can speak to Mr. Clifford Bow, J-A-N, Billis, General Construction, Company for all of your construction needs, 352-2432 or 533-2064. You can speak to Mr. Julian Nixon or his wife Karen Nixon for all of your building needs. You want to build a new home, you want to refurbish, renovate, build a wall, a patio, you want to build a, a step, whatever it is, so outside shed. Again, JAN Builders General Construction Company. 352-2432 or 533-2064. Am I forgetting anyone here? Let me see here before we get into because we got a hot topic today. All right, here we go. Yes, Ronnie's Shooniverse. That's right, Ronnie's Shooniverse, one of our newly established shoe stores. Uh, you can give them a call at 602 Seven five four six six zero two seven five four six. That's Ronnie Shuniverse. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still at number nine Forest Avenue, but I strongly suggest you give them a call six zero two seven five four six for all of your shoe needs, or uh, whether it's for kids, church, you name it. Trust me, they would be more than happy to assist you. Am I forgetting anyone? No. I want to say thank you to all of my sponsors. You guys are awesome. Every last one of you that helped me in being able to uh, teach every Saturday uh, and to, to, to meet uh, my obligations here. I want to thank all of you that have helped support uh, the, the, those people that we assist at the end of the month that we're obligated to. I want to thank all of you for all of your donations, all of your support, all of your emails, all of your kind words of encouragement. We thank you for all that you do in assisting humanity, not taking, taking, but always but giving, giving and helping and to shape the lives of other people in a positive way and to ensure that the true gospel of Jesus Christ, according to scripture, is spread throughout the world. The scriptures are very clear, and that is we ought to go into the world and teach and preach the gospel of Christ. Last but not least, the Hope Magazine. I love to show this in my camera. Hope Magazine by Jillian Curry Williams. I, I truly, truly encourage you to visit uh, Amazon to download a copy or to order a copy of the Hope Magazine. That's all right there in the camera. And please, this is our very own Bahamian fashion designer magazine is filled with an abundance of awesome, awesome articles, as well as a lot of her works. Again, I'm showing you in the camera. For those of you who are listening to me, you can actually watch me live 
on our YouTube, Facebook, as well as Twitter. I also have my Android and iPhone apps. You can go to any one of the Play Store or iPhone Store and la download the Minister Kevin L. Ewing app, and you'll be able to catch up with all of my teachings. I've been doing quite a number of teachings the past couple of weeks. You can go to Face, sorry, YouTube, where I have a total of over 400 videos, just pure insightful spiritual uh, uh, teaching, all right? I was away this week, I just came back yesterday, and that's why I had to uh, cancel a lot of the uh, counseling sessions that we have, but of course we will resume with that next week. Uh, we're working on some stuff, hopefully uh, things will uh, manifest very, very soon. I'm very, very hopeful and prayerful about that, here we go, okay? And I thank all of you for praying and covering this ministry and that we continue in the vein in which God has called us to. And that is to not only teach and preach the gospel, go into the world and do it clearly stated, but our job is to also to assist and help our fellow man. That is, these are the things that we're going to be judged on on the day of judgment. Okay, I'm hoping I didn't forget anything. All right. With that said, I want us to quickly now go into our teaching for today. Again, the revelation of forgiveness. And like I would have said to you earlier, we're going to work kind of backward today in the sense that how I normally teach, we're going to go into the story about this particular gentleman, I think was the ideal story to bring the pieces together and show people that if you have not forgiven your neighbor, you are not a Christian, you are not safe, and you need to find Jesus Christ soon because you're living a form of godliness. The rules are very clear. Forgive your brother so that, so that your heavenly father, if you went to the altar, okay, if the preacher said, who in here is not saved, and you put up your hand, okay, and he says, come here right now, and let's repeat the sinner's prayer. And you repeated that sinner's prayer, but you refuse to forgive your brother, you just wasted your time. You just put on a show so that everybody from the outside can say, oh, Kevin saved now. Kevin is not saved. He's a liar. If he has refused to forgive his brother, you are not saved. You don't know Jesus. You are unsaved. Okay? You are not, you do not know. Well, let me put it this way. You may know a Jesus, but not the Jesus, which is the son of the living God whom all things were made for him, by him, and without him, nothing was made. Because they, again, the requirement is very simple. You, God, cannot. You, you have tied his hands. He wants you. He said it's not his desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So if you have not f forgiven your brother, then the sinner's prayer is a waste of time. Again, the scriptures are clear. Mark eleven twenty five. 25, while praying, okay, forgive your brother so that, this is a condition, so that your heavenly Father can forgive you. What is the prerequisite to entering the kingdom of God or being a part of the member body of Christ? Well, he has to forgive you of the sins you're confessing. But he said, the only way that I can do that, it hinges on you now, you have to forgive others. Make it right with those who, have you, who you've held it in for years for, straighten that out and then get back to me. And now let's try the sinner's prayer again. Because until then, the only thing you did when you came, when you were caught, when the, 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 the prayer for salvation or whatever was offered to you, the only difference that took place there is that you were sitting down as a sinner, but now that you obeyed and you came up, now you're standing as a sinner. But no sinner's prayer will change your eternal state or spiritual state in terms of now becoming a part of the, member, the body of Christ if you choose to retain your unforgiveness for your fellow man. Now, anyone who's telling you different is a liar and they need to get saved too. Because the scriptures are unequivocally clear. We cannot any further make excuses. People are dying, dying a dozen. And many of them believe they are saved but refuse to forgive their brothers and sisters. I told you about a situation I learned of about this particular lady who, her and her daughter, she saved, the woman was saved to the, must see the 10th power, the mother that is, 
Okay, her and the daughter never got along, but she never, she treated the daughter like a, like a black sheep. Never forgave the daughter for whatever happened. Never wasn't speaking to her, treating her like she wasn't even her daughter. In fact, she made that clear to her. The woman went and do an operation and died on the operating table. Now, of course, the church that she went to, she did all of what was required by them. She came to church every Sunday. She had some position in the church. She knew how to swing on the chandelier. She knew how to run around the church and run ahead into the world. She knew how to, so, so as far as they're concerned, she, that woman was safe. That woman know Jesus. But I'm glad they're not like God. So God says, okay, now that's your version, right? Okay, now I pierce the heart of men and I see unforgiveness in this woman who was faithful in paying her tithe, faithful in coming to church, faithful in honoring her pastor, faithful in everything except the word of God that says, while you are praying, forgive others so that I could forgive you. So God is going to tell her, I never forgave you. Jesus, what do you mean you never forgave me all the times? I repented like you said. You did that. But the requirement was you must forgive your brother first. And you never did that. I, I, if, if I let you in, then I got to let everybody else. I owe everybody in hell an apology. And I need to get them out of there and now get them in the kingdom if I can make room for you. No, it is appointed unto man wants to die. And after that, he has to face a judgment. And your, your opinions and how you feel and your church policies means absolutely nothing. The scriptures are unequivocally clear. So let's go to Genesis chapter 37. I love this story. Genesis 37. This is such a powerful story. And we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 4. And then we're going to drop to verse 9 to verse 11. And of course, we're going to use the life of Joseph. I so love this. And, and every time I read this story particularly when it got to the part of him forgiving his brothers in spite of what they did. Listen, if that don't bring some kind of tear to your eye, excuse me, something wrong with you need to get saved too. <laughs> no, but seriously, you, you, you it have to pierce your heart that, in, that, that despite what was done to this man, to this boy, the egregious acts, one after the other, and I learned a lot in this. Anyway, let's go. Genesis chapter 37, beginning at verse 1. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 4. And it says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generation of Jacob. Joseph being 17 mm -hmm, years old, and feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with his sons of, of Bil, Bilhah and with the sons of Zelpha, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil reports. So all the wickedness they was doing, Joseph would come and tell his daddy. Okay, verse 3 of Genesis 37 says, Now Israel loved, Israel is the same as Jacob. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. So you know it's God's problem, right? Because he, which is Israel, was the son of his old age, and the and he made him a coat of many colors. Verse 4 of Genesis 37. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him, who was him? Joseph. More than all his brethren, listen, 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 listen. They hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Mighty God, that's a revelation right there. They hate you so much they can't even have a proper conversation without the facial disgust they have for you, without all of the negative, profane words, the, the adjectives of negativity that will precede your name. There's no good, all of that stuff there. Why though? Why? Because the father, he didn't force his father to love him more, because the father loved him more. Why? Because... Joseph was the son of his old age. This is, this is powerful. Let's drop to verse 9. And he, who was he? This is Joseph, dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made homage to me. Verse 10 of Genesis 37. And he, which is Joseph, told it to his father 
unto his brethren, and his father rebuked him, mm -hmm. and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee on the earth? So the boys hate him, his father rebuke him. But listen to verse 11. And his brethren or his brothers, they move from hate now to what? Envy. His brothers envied him, uh -huh, but his father observed his saying. So, so far we see that a person's gift, that they have uh, uh, no responsibility in terms of they didn't cause the gift, they didn't demand that God give them this particular gift. This is a gift that he had, the gift of dreaming. However, based on the records and the interpretation from the daddy as well as the brothers, it is clear that they had the gifts of interpretation. But as far as the brothers are concerned, just like people today, they are so envious of you and they hate you because the boss favor you more, mommy or daddy favor you more, the, the, your colleagues favor you more. Now, rather than them hating the colleagues or the mommy and daddy who favor you, somehow the Satan has convinced them that no, 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 no. Don't hate those who love them. You must hate those who are being loved or appreciated by others. Now, isn't that crazy for them to buy into that? So the Bible is using two adjectives here, hate and envy, two descriptive words as it relates to how his brothers felt about him, not because of nothing that he did, because his gift at the time was dreaming. He wasn't skilled in the interpretation. He couldn't interpret them at the time, but his brothers could. So instead of them marveling over the fact that, uh, hey, we can actually interpret it, they became jealous. But it was a result of their hate towards him. It is the same thing that I said to you earlier. I said, people who do not forgive other people, their lives are on pause. They're stuck in time. And they're stuck into the place in which that happened. So if that happened in 1953, 1983, 2003, 2021, that person have yet to move from that point. Kevin, how? Prove it. Every time they mention this person's name, they go back to where they're stuck. I remember in 1973, when you walked past me in the bus stop, oh, sorry, you was riding your bicycle and you did not give me a ride to where I was going. 1973? But you know how much people are dead? You know how much things that happen in the world? Huh? You know how much hurricanes and people's lives have been lost? And you that's what you're holding on to? They stuck. So guess what happens now? No matter how much God has blessed them, whether he blessed them with health, they, 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 they got good health, he blessed them with a nice home, car, nice job, they got some money, they ain't got no real issues in life. But they cannot, please somebody hear me today, you cannot enjoy the blessings of the Lord despite, this is how good God is, despite your inability to forgive, God still is blessing you, but you cannot enjoy the blessing because you're holding on to this one thing, this one person, this one group, this one job, this former boss who live in their lives. But you stuck right there. Mighty God, my Lord, please, Lord, come, come save these people. You're, you're, you're on lock. Mm -mm. You, you, and you can't see the city for the smoke. I didn't want to bring this up, but, you know, I just say, you know, these people calling these self-Christian things, you know, I hear him on the radio preaching the other day, but my God, what did he do back there in 1984? I remember that. I, you remember that? And what that memory is doing for you, keeping you stuck, stuck. Just like somebody ever put a, you ever put a stake in the ground to tie it on a tent? That's just how they are. That stake ain't going nowhere. They stuck in life. They're miserable. They cannot go nowhere. Why? Because they refuse to forgive. They refuse to release. Because they feel that devil has convinced this person. Uh -uh, I don't care how much this can cost me friendship, family. I don't care how much people diss me for this. i holding on to this. And one woman tell me I got this person to my heart. Wow. That's where you got them? Wow. I see why you have so much heart, boy. But anyway, being good there. So the Bible is very clear in Genesis 37 how his brothers envied and hated him, all right, because of his gifts, okay? Now let's go in the same chapter, let's go to uh, 
verse 12. We can read from verse 12 to verse 36, okay? Because we want some more information as it relates to these brothers' position with Joseph. So verse 12 of Genesis 37 says, And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel, which is also Jacob, said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? He's asking a question. He says, Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said, And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, See whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem, verse 15 of Genesis 37. And a certain man found him, who was him? Joseph. And behold, he was wandering in the field, and the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. Verse 17 of Genesis 37. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Mighty Lord, you all listen to this? You see, when you leave hate and bitterness, you leave it and you don't deal with it. Watch how it's upgrading itself by default. You went from hate to envy. Now you won't kill the man. Why? Think about the reason and what's fueling your position here. Because his daddy loved him more than he loved y'all? Because the boy had a dream? And your bitterness and anger, whenever you speak about them, it's in the most vile terminology. I hate them. I wish they could die. I wish something could shoot them down. Or listen to what you are saying, child of God. Because what you're saying... I don't need a prophet to prophesy to me about you as it relates to your heart condition. The Bible is very clear. I must now deal with you and test you. It says, out of the abundance of a person's heart, their mouth will talk on them. In other words, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. You don't realize your heart is on display every time I hear you say, I can't stand this stupid girl, this foolish ignorant foolness and the anger the bible says out of the mouth out of the abundance the word abundance meaning out of the overflow in so much words the scripture is saying that your heart is overflowing with hatred your heart is overflowing with forgiveness unforgiveness but yet but yet you hypocrite you get on your knees Father, forgive me for all the evil I did today, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, I did some things. Oh, Lord, I'm proud of myself, Lord. But please forgive me. I, I, even though I can forgive my brother, let's be straight here, Jesus. Let me get it right with you right now. I, I refuse to forgive Kevin. Let me be clear with you, Jesus. That ain't gonna happen because I got Kevin to my heart. But, 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 I need you to forgive me, sweet Jesus. Oh, Lord. Can't you see this poison is the devil? Can't you see this poison is, is Satan incarnate? How people hear me and hear me well. I want you to see the hypocrisy. I want you to see how people are comfortable. And, and even though this message is for all and sundry, I specifically speaking to the Christians because 90 90 percent of them write me with this oh I what if I forgive them but blah blah. No, 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 no. They were here no conditions. You know, you know, conditions. The reality is your, 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 your verbal communication, your behavior is revealing your heart. And I'm going to prove it to you in this story. So the Bible goes on to say here, anyway, long story short, where this boy, I mean, his brothers decided to kill him. Reuben says, no, we, we're not going to kill him. So they buried him and they sell him to Initially, they wanted to sell him to the Ishmaelites, and they sent him to the Midianites, okay? Uh, well, Judah then came and says, listen, we don't want his blood on our hands, so let's just get some money for this dude. They had him down in the pit. 
Then they took his coat of many colors and slaughtered an animal and put blood on it and then lied to the daddy. Lied to his father and said, listen, we can't find him. More than likely because blood on this boy's clothes, he dead. The Bible says that he was sold by the Midianites to the Egyptians, of course, where he became a butler in the house uh, of Pharaoh, right? So with that said, let's go to Genesis 45. So we're trying to build a nice foundation here. Let's go to Genesis 45, beginning at verse 1. We can read all the way to verse 27. Genesis 45, beginning at verse 1. It says, Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them. Now what happened now? After all of his years of being a butler to Potiphar, okay, uh, to Potiphar, and he was accused of rape and all these other things, these bad things happening to him, all because of what his, bro his brothers them made his life. Through their selfish decisions, they've made his life seemingly a living hell. Because if you keep looking at these experiences as to what somebody did to you, and then you justify it with the spirit of offense and, and all that, you're missing, the le you're missing the lesson in this. You're missing... God is the one who caused, or he could have stopped it. He could have shut his brothers right down. He could have done it, but he didn't do it because no, nobody looks at God's plan and all of this. All they're looking at, I'm offended. This person did this to me. I'm not going to talk to them anymore. I'm going to tell everybody how evil and wicked they are. And all you're doing is polluting your destiny because this incident here was to shift your life. Nothing else could have done it. God chose this no good person right here. God chose this family right here. God chose this boss right here. No other boss could have done it. This boss had the right ingredients of spitefulness. This boss had the right ingredients of oppression to oppress you. And what did it make you do? Let's look at some positive things. Because all you could see is how no good this boss is. All you could see is how they like everybody else except you. But let's look beyond your selfishness, you hypocrite. They made you pray more. Before this boss started doing what they did, you never used to fast. You're fasting now. You, you, you never wanted nothing to do with God before. All of a sudden, because of the pressure from this no good boss, who you feel you have a right to hate, look at you deep in your Bible now. Look, you wasn't doing this before. The same no good boss. Now, you've been going to church or whatever for 400 years. You wasn't doing it there. Right? So God put this external pressure on you. Look, 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 look how you're talking about God's uh, plan for your life. Because I know you don't see it as that. Look at God's plan through this no good husband. Look at God's plan through this no good wife. Look at God's plan through these rude, rebellious children. See, because you could see everybody else's fault except yours, you hypocrite. I'm trying to help someone today. I know you won't hear this. You probably cussed me over every year today. But you have to stand before God just like me. And you cannot deny the fact that you hear in Scripture. So God, as we're about to see here, God is using the adversities of your life to chisel you into whom and what he's called you to be. God is using these moments for a shift. And that's the real shift. Not that nonsense they're talking about paradigm shift and you can get money and a bunch of gold at the end of some rainbow garbage. This here, this tragedy, this, this oppression, this, this, all of this, and I speak from experience, when you see it for what it is and accept it for what it is, now you could sit back and say, boy, I never thought I would have seen a day. I thank God for this no good boss. Wow. I thank God for the difficulty in this marriage. I thank God for this divorce. Yeah, you all hear me? I thank God for this divorce. I thank all of this is giving me an appreciation for life. Not only that, it's causing me to, the, the scriptures are now coming alive. Now it makes sense when the Bible says, all things are working together for my good. Now it makes sense when the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 that we must give thanks in all things. For this is the will of God concerning us. Who? The believer in Christ Jesus. So Jesus, you telling me this boss who put his foot on my neck, I couldn't get no promotion. All of his coonies on the job, all of them was working in harmony against me. And you telling me, Jesus, this was your will for me? Well, what part of will you didn't get understand? But look at you today. Look at you today. Now, let's go back some more. 
when you lived your regular life, do you think you'd have been like this today? Had you not encountered this group of people here? Now be real now. No, you wouldn't. You would have no reason to pray if life was a bed of roses. Just like Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth have no reason to pray to Jesus for money. She have no re reason to pray to Jesus to help. Lord, see if you could bless Charles with a job to pay the light bill in the palace. You will never see it. You will never see it. So the Bible, Jesus is saying, listen, I want you to look at your adversities as a chisel and me grooming you into whom and what I want you to be. And would not to be like, look at that boss as this is what you would not be like when you get to this position or even higher. Not to hold in the animosity in the day you get to position, you're looking for that boss and anything remotely related to him to spite, to be vindictive. That tells me you didn't learn your lesson. So guess what's going to happen? You're going to repeat this lesson again. That's how school is. Huh? When you're dumb like a post, they keep you in the class. You repeat the class again. Because you clearly you didn't learn what this particular grade or class offered. So you, you need to stay it till you get it. And then you move to the next class. So people don't see it that way. And still you hear trash like, oh, the enemies you see today, you will see no more. Go out and show me that these same enemies, you can kill them and shoot them down and poke out the eye. Really? And what is the lesson in all of that? Self-gratification. Self-appeasement. Everybody's missing the lesson. So that's why they keep repeating the story. Because they never learned the lesson. You know when you can know they learned the lesson? When they say, you know what? In spite of what has happened to me, I thank God for this person. I thank God because they have caused me to look at myself. And the very thing I keep complaining about them and saying bad things about them, I am a hypocrite. I do the same thing. But I was hurt because it happened to me. But the truth is, there are many people out there complaining about the same thing I did to them. Hypocrite. Boy, I, 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 listen, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say, but you all need to get saved. All y'all. <laughs> so listen. Genesis 41, 45 verse 1. Then Joseph could not refrain himself. He's revealing himself to his brothers. Finally got to the point now. All the dreams that he had had, he's now living. He's in living color, living the, the, the dreams that he saw. Because So the Lord was showing him excerpts of what he would become in the future. But God never showed him the details of it. Not knowing that a part of those details, his brothers are going to conspire to kill him. His brothers going to sell him into slavery. He's going to have hardship, be falsely accused of rape, sent to a prison. All of this, nothing he did wrong. All the man did was trying to just live like everybody else. But now he's reached the pinnacle of his life based on the dreams. And look, 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 look at what's going to happen. Genesis 45 verse 1. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried. This is after he exposed himself to his brothers. He was crying. The Bible says, Cause every man, he caused every man to go out from him. And there stood no man with him. While Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. Can you imagine this? He, he sent them all out. He stayed in the room. He closed those big, solid cedar crest doors. And that boy wailed and cried so much that the Pharaoh and all of the administration heard him. My Lord. Verse 2. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. Why are you all troubled? Because you all know the wickedness that you all did to him. Uh -huh. Verse 4 of Genesis 45. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves that you sold me here. For listen, 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 for God did send me before you to preserve your life. Boy, listen, let me put a pin in there. Anybody listening to me right now, and if you're still holding it in for people, listen to me here, you, you are missing the entire lesson. You have wasted your life. 
the trajectory in which your life is going. It shouldn't have been this way. Because had you forgiven and had you seen the lesson and all of this, you would have been on a different path right now. Because you refuse to forgive, you are now filled with resentment, filled with anger and frustration and bitterness, all because you couldn't get your satisfaction. You couldn't appease yourself by watching the person who hurt you suffer, even though the very thing that you want them to be whipped for, you're doing it to someone right now as I speak to you. Now, if that ain't hypocrisy, then you define what hypocrisy is to me. This man said to them, don't be troubled. Meaning that this man, he, he, he forgave them. He had to. And, and forgiveness speaks of maturity. Only mature people can forgive. Children, little babies, only them will keep running over the same thing over and over. One of the major signs of maturity is forgiveness. To look beyond a situation in spite of how devastating it was to you. In spite of you being on the tail end, taking all the licks, you were able to look past all of that. You have a greater appreciation for life. God has blessed you, blessed you with beautiful kids. They're educated. You're a part of their life. You're a grandparent now. You get to see the next generation. You know, then you look around and see all of your other former colleagues and so on and peers. They then die out and so on or they're on drugs. And But here you are today. And, you, and there's no way in the world you could hold on to unforgiveness when there's so much good things happening in your life. But you see, the devil can never let you look at it that way. Never. Just keep that hate, keep meditating on that day and night, even though it ain't gonna change nothing. Tell everybody you meet how no good this person is. Tell everybody you meet how this and that they are. But at the same time now, you tell them you save. Tell them you save and you love Jesus. And tell them the Holy Spirit tell you to tell them, get their life in order. Not you, not you. Then you start off in some demon tongues, rock it up, rock it up, rock it up. The Lord told me that your son need to get saved, but not you to stop lying. Not you to forgive other people. The Holy Spirit ain't tell you that. Hypocrite. Hypocrite, my Lord. Let me tell you something, yeah? let me be real with y'all. There is no person that has been lied on in the history of mankind than how people have lied on God and the Holy Spirit. Isn't that interesting? You know, like people like that, every two words, the Holy Spirit sent me here. Yeah, what did he tell you? And I don't know, but I, I, I watch, watch, watch how you know they lying. And I feel in my spirit. Now, hold on, back up now. You just say the Holy Spirit. Now, what do you mean you feel in your spirit? You feel in your spirit. You say the Holy Now, make up your mind. Is it your spirit speaking, which I believe, or is it the Holy Spirit? No, but what I mean is that, no, 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 I, you mean what you say. <laughs> That's what you, don't you try that. See, you always let them get away. You know, I don't let, I just check the, every time they come to, that's why they don't come no more. I just check them right in their no good tracks. Stop it. Stop, stop racking up more sins than what you already have to answer for under their judgment. Stop it. The Holy Spirit, why would the Holy Spirit tell you to tell me, get my life in order? And you have over 30 years worth of unforgiveness in your heart. You tell me he loved me more than he loved you? <laughs> my Lord. Lord, oh boy, I tell you, we need a righteous whip out here. <laughs> they, they all need to do better. So Genesis 45 and verse 5 says, Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me here. For God did send me before you or ahead of you to preserve your life. For these two years had the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be airing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. This is a powerful scripture. The seventh verse of Genesis 45. The word prospect, prospe sorry, the word where are we now? Sorry, seven. Prosterity speaks of the future generation. Now, isn't that powerful? Now, while he was going through all of his toils with his brothers, he could have been like most of you listening to me right now. Look at yourself as the victim. Look at the wrong they do me. My sisters and brothers just, just use me and take all my money. All their life, you just repeat that record over and over. You speaking these things consistently into existence, and so you stare at that same circle. But listen what, what he said here. He said, listen, I can't be mad at y'all. He said, don't be troubled but but y'all selling me. Don't worry about that. I've come to the realization that God, based on him fulfilling what he showed me in the past, 
He did this for y'all through me. I was the key to your destiny. And had I take it personal, I would have hindered all of us. I'm talking to somebody. How many lives have you hindered because you refuse to forgive? You refuse to release. How many, when, when God show you on the day, look at your, look what your unforgiveness did. I don't think you understand the extent of what your unforgiveness is doing. This man was able to come on, on the good end by saying, hey, God allowed everything that y'all did to me because he knew this famine was coming. He knew the trouble was ahead. So therefore, he allowed me to become the one to take the licks because he knew I would know it against y'all and see the bigger picture. How many families are oppressed because the brothers don't speak to each other, the sisters and mommy taking her sides and she don't talk to this one and this one give her money so she or they. How many destinies has been altered for the negative because of people limited view of what this entire situation was supposed to do? Mighty God. Well, you can hear this judge. You, you can hear see it. Seed can fix that. That's right. No, they ain't talking to you. God says, sow a seed. Amen. Give a seed and he can, he can fix it. Bunch of fools. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Hear this story. What God allowed wasn't about Joseph. He picked Joseph because he knew the heart. Of, if he had picked Reuben or Judah, they didn't have the heart like uh, Joseph had. A forgiving one. So God said, let me pick him to become the sacrifice for the family. Let them put the licks on him. He ain't gonna take it personal. I'm sure he was mad in the beginning. I'm sure he couldn't understand like everybody else, but he kept going forward in spite of them trying to kill him, in spite of them selling him, in spite of them lying to the father and saying, your son dead. In spite of all of that, he says, I see. I see God use me to make the way for all of y'all. Mighty God. Holy boy, I love that. God, I thank you. Thank you for spiritual insight. Thank you, Father God. I pray for those listening to me right now. Father God, cause them to look beyond the hurt. Cause them to look beyond the pain. Cause them to look beyond the rape. Cause them to look beyond the molestation. Cause them to look beyond the abuse. Cause them to look beyond the murder. Whatever they deem as egregious. Father, just like when Elijah the prophet prayed for his servant and said, Lord, open his spiritual eyes. Because he blinded, open his spiritual eyes so that he may see, Father, I am praying right now that everyone under the sound of my voice now and even in the future when they watch this video, Father, open their spiritual eyes to see the reality of what they're doing to themselves and by extension those connected to them when they refuse to forgive. Joseph said here very clearly in Genesis 45, verse 5, he says, Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves, that you sold me here, for God did send me ahead of y'all to preserve your life. For these two years have the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which they shall neither be airing nor harvest. Verse 7 of Genesis 45, And God sent me before you or ahead of you to preserve your generations or posterity in the earth. Meaning that if it wasn't for me, if I had taken it personal, the generations would have been wiped out. You're listening to the magnitude of this revelation where your unforgiveness could literally derail generations? Mighty God. Boy, I hope you're all feeling this today, yeah? Verse 7 of Genesis 45. And God sent me before you or sent me ahead of you. You are part of me coming here through your hate, through your envy, through your, your conspiracy against me. Mighty God. You, you, God allowed that because you were the right people to push me in a direction. He would have never gone volunteer. He would have never volunteered to do that. Never. So God said, I can put you in a family. You can put some licks on you. But I want you to see it as them putting licks on you. See it as the, see what asks me. Father, what is it that you have preserved for my family? God, I, I pray it all the time. I don't want none of my family members to go to hell. Father God, but now that you, you answered the prayer, look how you're answering it. By letting them put licks on you. God, how are that answering? I, I don't understand that. It ain't for you to understand. You keep going forward in faith. Keep going forward. Because what's happening here now 
the spiritual implications are profound. I'm trying to help somebody today. Like, you know, you all need to get your no good cousin Pookie them on the line right now to come listen to this and stop holding in unforgiveness. You're destroying generations, and by extension, you will have a front row seat in hellfire. So verse 7, he says, And God sent me before you or ahead of you to preserve your posterity of the future generations in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Verse 8 of Genesis 45. So now it was not you that sent me here. Mighty God. You all hear this? This is what you call spiritual maturity. Where he would have taken the hurt and the pain and the betrayal of his blood, ain't no strangers did this to him, and converted to something good. Wow, that's a lesson. How many of you right there? How many of you? How many of you? Your, your, your daddy did this, or mommy did this, or whoever did this. It made you write books. It made you a good counselor to other people. It made you to be relatable. I tell you this all the time. When I was having all these witchcraft attacks and hooking up with these people working over on me 24-7, I never knew this was pointing me to the direction of where I am right now. I never, ever once planned to be on the radio. I never once planned to be on no pulpit. It was never my desire to be no preacher. But what they meant for bad. How many times you all hear me say on this radio, I thank every oppressor in my life, everyone who planned that stuff to my door in my yard, put it on my motorbike, everyone who had spirits taken over my place. I give God the glory for you. I magnify Jesus for you. And my prayer for you, if you could hear me right now, because I've been telling you this, I pray that heaven will be your home. I pray that you, you and your family will be blessed. Because without you, I would not be here today. I would not be here on this radio. I would not be teaching it through the corners of this planet. I would not be as bold as I am without your oppression, without your sorcery, without your connivingness, without your conspiracies. I bless God for you. And God has used me through you for your generation to preach the free gospel of Jesus Christ to understand the revelation through my experience coupled with the word of God. I could not do it without my haters. I thank God for every, and I, I y'all keep getting upset. I, listen, y'all say, Kevin, you need to thank the pastors. No, no, I thank them. I thank them. But they could never do for me what my haters did. By default. When you see the bigger picture, you cannot get mad at them. No, man. No, you see the see when you and the, the only way this could happen, you have to be spiritually mature. You are spiritually immature when all you could see is the wrong people did to you. But you can never see no good in it. You can't see God in it, period. No, you need to get saved. But so I thank God for every every listen, I thank my sweet Jesus. My sweet, listen, if I tell you the things I went through in this life, you would wonder why why I even last that long to even wait on the promises of God, but was waited in the end. Had no idea God was using them from the job to personal relationship to everything in my life was pointing me right here. But I didn't know that, just like Joseph. And God showed me, I always told you, I saw dreams in the beginning, just like Joseph but never the details before I get to the promised land. And that's the part where you have to trust God. And sometimes the only hope you will ever have, and I can only imagine how he felt, the only hope he had was in the, in the minutes, in the times of despair and depression, and when you feel like everyone has failed you, the only thing that come to your mind is the dream you had. I remember seeing me preaching. I remember these repeated, and, and that's the only thing. Even though I wasn't planning to be no preacher, the only form of comfort was to go back to the things God revealed to me in my dreams. So now when the day come and you see, now that you're in the promised land, you'll be like, mighty God, it was waiting. And you realize this could not happen without these people. Father, everyone that has meant me wrong, everyone that has meant me harm, everyone who has conspired to end my life through spiritual or physical means, I thank you for them. 
I give you glory for them. I magnify the God of Abraham, the God who knows the end from the beginning for those people's lives. I pray for their salvation. I pray for their deliverance. I pray for their future generation and that the curses be broken from those future generations' lives because of the things that these people here have done. Father, I have no resentment, no hate, no bitterness because when I look at the bigger picture, they were all a part of the purposes and plans you had for me. Scriptures are unequivocally clear. Romans 8 and 28. And we know who? The mature believers. And we know that all things, not some, all things are working together for good. For who though? For those that love God and those who are called to his purpose. He didn't say all things were good. No. He says everything is in a big pot being stirred. The good, the bad, the indifferent, the ugly, the pretty, all of that. But he says at the end of this recipe, it's going to work for good or benefit you in the end. And I am a living witness of that. And whoever's listening to me right now, you holding on to unforgiveness, you are suspending the plan of God for your life. Watch this. And by extension, the lives of other people. What if Joseph took it personal? What if after he got into Pharaoh's place and said, look here, y'all, I want you. Because first of all, the Egyptians hated the Hebrew people. So he could have said, listen, I will kill my brothers. And they would have been more than happy to help him do it. But no, the spirit of the living God picked the right man for the job. God had to pick someone with a forgiving heart. One who is going to mature as it, is, as it relates to his times in life to understand the spiritual implication as to why he's going through what he's going through. I couldn't understand. Everyone I get connected with got their hand, hook up and obey and voodoo. And, well, how I, why? Not knowing, buddy, you think you pick them, you know. And you pick them, but you are being guided because you can learn from all of these things. All that you can learn from. And coupling this with the word of God, you will be able to stand on any pulpit and relate to people. See, there's a difference between those who have experience and making their presentation and those who read it from a book. People would be more attracted to those who could couple their experience with what the word of God is saying in these areas, as opposed to the movement to Harvard and all these other places who want to speak the Queen's English and no, I had no experience in this. No, 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 no. And that's why I tell you, thank God, whoever you are, listen right now, thank God for your oppressors. Thank God for that supervisor, that boss. Thank God for that wife, the husband, no matter what they did. Thank God for them. They are not in your lives by accident. Look at the bigger picture. Say, Lord, show me the bigger picture. Show me the bigger picture, Jesus. God, right now I'm, I'm, I have a tunnel vision. I'm narrow-minded because I'm consumed with hate and bitterness and the spirit of offense have dominated my life. Father God, please look at me right now because I may be moments from that, a week, two weeks, two months. I don't know. I don't know. But Lord, now that I'm listening to this man on the radio, this man is saying to me that if I don't forgive these people, you never forgave me. Even though I am telling everybody I've been saved since 1985. But you said if I did not forgive my fellow man, you ain't going to forgive me. Mighty God. Mighty God. You all listen to this? Let's, 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 let's quickly... Let, let's, let's quickly go to the scripture right here. Let's go to, let's go to uh, Genesis 41. Let me show how deep this was for this young man. Let's go to Genesis 41. This is so powerful. Genesis 41, and we can read from verse 50 to verse 52. Okay? For this, that is before he was introduced to his brothers, and he, he exposed who he was as, as, as Joseph. So Genesis chapter 41 Beginning at verse 50, all right? And it says, And unto Joseph were born two sons. Listen to this now. Before the years of famine came. Okay, so he had children before the seven years of, uh, excuse me, recession or hardship came. It says, And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asnet, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bare unto him. Listen to verse 51. And Joseph, listen, listen, called the name of his firstborn Manasseh. Uh -huh. And what does that mean? For God said, uh -huh, had made me, for God had made me forget, listen, forget my toil and my father's house. In so much words, he's now naming his son Manasseh because 
God has given him the ability. This is called maturity now, and he's allowing God to do it because a lot of y'all fighting it. He's allowing God. God is now descend upon him an anointment, an anointing to forgive. So much so that every time you call your, your eldest boy named Manasseh, that, that's what Manasseh name to forget the toils and troubles and heartaches and pain. Forget it. And whatever happened in your father's house, the rape, the incest, the, the, the wickedness you were exposed to, act just like Joseph. Now act, God, help me to forget that. Help me to move on. God, I've been stuck in 1996. I've been stuck in 1966. I've been stuck in 1970, 1960. Some of you have been stuck in 1930. You're still living 80 something years later and you're still stuck. But Kevin, how am I stuck? Because you never release the pain. You never forgive. Some of those people already outlive you. They're dead. But you still refuse to forgive. And you never enjoyed life. Why? Because you were stuck in the time that it happened simply because you never ever forgave that person. Mighty God. I'm talking to somebody. I'm trying to help you. The revelation of forgiveness. I'm trying to help you. Release them. Say, Lord, I don't know how to do it. Be honest. Father, I, I tried and it's on my mind and, and, and it is me. Look, confront you. Lord, it is me. I refuse to forgive. I, I, I am, help me, help me to forgive, Lord. Help me to release. Help me to release what, what they did. They, they killed my son, Father God. They stabbed my daughter to death, Jesus. Lord, I blame the police. I blame everybody. Everyone I blame all to justify my unforgiveness. Father God, every time I tell this family member about what this other family member did, and because that, that family member didn't agree with me, Father God, I felt like I could use that everybody's on this person's side, but they're not on my side, so that justify me reten retaining this hate. It's called retention of unforgiveness. The Bible said he named his eldest son. Okay, verse 51 of Genesis 41. And Joseph called the name of his firstborn Manasseh, for God said, he had made me forget all my toils and my father's house. Listen to verse 52. And the name of the second son he called Ephraim, uh -huh, for God had caused me to fulfill in the land of my affliction. Meaning that the first son, that's going to remind you that God has expunged all of the hate, bitterness, and so on. The second son Ephraim, this means now you're going to enjoy in the place where you should have been afflicted, you're now going to enjoy your life. But what was the prerequisite to you enjoying your life, Mr. Joseph? I had to let go of the past. I had to release it. Some pastors, oh, you thought it's going to let you all get away. Some pastors don't speak to certain members. Why? Why? Why don't you do it, sir? Why don't you do it, ma'am? Why? You use a child of God. Who, who people are you leading? If you don't know how to forgive, when your scripture, the Bible that you preach from every Sunday said, if you don't forgive your brother, the Heavenly Father never and will not forgive you. That's not my rules. So I'm saying that to say this, your title ain't gonna change the law. Your title don't augment or delete or add to or whatever it is, the, the law of God will remain the same. Nothing is gonna change there. So sheep, you get with the program. There are certain members you wouldn't meet with because they don't agree with you. There are certain members you wouldn't meet with because they don't, according to you, they don't support you like the other ones do. So that gives you the right to be spiteful. That's another thing. The spitefulness. The spitefulness. You mothers out there, the man don't want you. He made it clear to you. You all got some kids together. Why are you using the kids to spite the man? You men out there, why are you making it difficult for this woman and don't want to support the children? You are petty and spiteful. All of that is the branches and the buds of unforgiveness. You refuse to move on with your life. Come to the fact that we have children together. Let's deal with this as these are our children in spite of who we go with, who we marry, who we don't marry. That have, the, the, child, the child should always be the focus or the children. And not say, I ain't going to give her no money because she... Cheat on me 700 years ago. What that have to do with the child? The child didn't cheat on you? You see how stupid you are? You are foolish. And look, look at you, mom. Look at you. You, you grew up with your, your both parents. You had the privilege 
all right? Unlike 75% of people, you have the privilege of growing up with both parents in the home, okay? But this guy, you have children with all a child with, okay? For whatever reason, you're all split. Now, your job, watch this now, you're going to deprive your child from having the pleasure of both parents. They ain't going to be in the same house, but you're going to deprive, because you need to show this man you don't play. You're going to call the police every time. You're going to go to, you're going to make his life a living hell at the expense of the child because of your stupidity. And your stupidity in this sense here, and this is for man and woman, your stupidity here is that you refuse to forgive. Again, let's go back to what Joseph said. He says, listen, you all don't get, don't feel bad about this. God sent me ahead to secure your, pros your posterity, meaning for the future generation. Mom, sir. Okay, using these children to spite each other, you're tampering with the future generation. I'm trying to help you. They can preach this to you. They can tell you, so see it. I want to see it from you. What I want from you is to live the life according to the scriptures, to get a better quality of life. That don't come through, see it. You will never see it through a see it. Do the word of God, do the will of God, which is the word of God. So my friends, you have to look beyond your personal view, your personal height. And the reason why I say it's personal, because yes, it is personal, but I'm telling you, there are people who've died and gone on to glory, who've experienced worse, but forgave. So you cannot have an excuse when they would have suffered greater, but was able to forgive, and you probably wouldn't have had a fraction of it, but you took it so personal that you have now determined there's no way in the world I can forgive this person. I have seen a, 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 a pastor lady, and I, I was in her presence when she said this. When she said this particular person who did something, she took her right hand and hit her on her chest and said, I am holding them to my heart for what they did. You was a pastor? You mean pastor and shrimp, but not P-A-S-T-O-R. P-A-S-T-A, pastor and grits, you mean? Because you couldn't mean no pastor one of God's servant. <laughs> Get out of here with that nonsense. Get out of here with that foolishness. Past and grits, I accept that. Past and conquer, I accept that. Past and chicken, I accept, I accept that. But you're telling me, as a past, P-A-S-T-O-R, that you are holding someone, meaning you're not releasing them from the hurt they give you, you're telling me, that's okay? Well, I, I know which pastor you mean. Okay? That's the pastor. Okay, that's Feta Cherry. That's what it is. <laughs> huh? Huh? That's Alfredo. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> but you couldn't mean P A S T O R. No, 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 no. No, you're talking about something they cook up in the restaurant somewhere. <laughs> get out of here, you devil. Go get saved. There's room on the cross for you also. <laughs> so listen. So listen to this. The revelation here is that when you hold on to unforgiveness, for whatever stupid reason you're holding on to it, you are hindering, you will never enjoy life. And the devil's will continually sit on you and encouraging you and causing you to justify not knowing that you have suspended your life. You, nobody, they, they didn't do it to you. You did it because their lives are moving on. In fact, they avoid you. And you, 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 you think, and look, look at the physical part of it. You, you bug them in the store and you spot them before they see you. You got to go through another aisle. You got to put down the basket or park the trolley and leave or sit in your car. Look, look at how difficult you're making your life because you are such a coward and you can't walk up to that person and say, listen, Mary, Kevin, John, listen, I am wrong. Don't even say, if I have done something wrong, you hypocrite. I have, I am, I have wronged you. I have talked evil things about you. I am ashamed of myself. I'm asking your pardon. Even if they did the wrong, you, you, you be a woman, you be a man. Because at the end of the day, again, look at it not only holistically, but look at it from a spiritual perspective going forward. You have to stand before God one day, the same God, the one who you keep saying, the Holy Spirit tell you this and that. He's telling you everything, but everybody else except you, that same one. So I'm saying to you, you got to look beyond. You have to look beyond. You cannot allow your view to be limited as it relates to, to these things. You cannot be consumed by some clown telling you God is going to bless you. I see God turning around and so we see. They, they are demons. These people need to get saved and delivered and set free. Who have turned the gospel into some merchandise and nonsense. You need to come back to the scriptures. 
that is making it clear to you what you need to be doing right now let's go here we can we, we can we can come down to this here before we go into the other scriptures let's go to uh let's go to same genesis chapter 50 right let's go to Gen let's go back to genesis 50 sorry let's go to genesis 50. genesis 50 all right genesis 50 and let's look at Let's look at uh let's look at verse 15, Genesis 50, verse 15, right? Now we're coming now where <clears throat> we don't pass where Joseph uh, revealed himself to his brothers. He then sent for them, brought his father and all his families into Egypt, and through Joseph's consultation with the Pharaoh, they were able to secure a nice posh piece of land called Goshen, where all of the uh, Hebrew people uh, reside. Eventually, uh, after Joseph's father saw him, he was so excited. He said, now, now I can die in peace. Now that I've actually lived to see that my son didn't die, but he is now alive. So he had now passed on. Joseph had now passed on. He had died. Now watch what happens now, okay? So let's go to Genesis 50, verse 15. It says, And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, they among themselves again, Joseph will pre-adventure, or suppose he hate us, and will certainly deal with us with all the evil which we did unto him. Okay? So you see, their minds didn't mature, they re but they realized what they did was evil. So I want you to read behind what they're saying. Yes, they are reasoning among each other to say, oh Lord, daddy dead now, boy, uh, boy, what if he can come back at us? Why? Why are you saying that? But they admitted it because of the evil we did to him. So it isn't that those who are who did you wrong didn't know. They know. They know. But again, it becomes a pride thing after a while. And that's why whether they did the wrong or, or you did the wrong, it don't matter. You man up and make it right. You go fix it. It ain't gonna fix itself. You go fix it. But you ain't doing it for them, you know. No, you gotta think futuristic, just like Joseph said, I'm doing this to secure your prosperity prosperity your future generation because let me prove it to you then okay i've seen this happen over and over in families i've had many consulting sessions with people like this and i want you to put a finger right here because this is an important point where you have okay grammy grammy was very uh she was she, she showed a lot of favoritism amongst her children right and some she was more kind to than the other ones all right because this was never fixed, or when the children say, Mommy, you always just treat me different than you treat Sally. Hush him out. Okay, talking foolishness. Never addressed it. Let's look at the spiritual implication. You're going to watch this now go down the generation. So guess what? The, the cousins are not doing the same to each other. The siblings are doing the same thing to each other. So you have this big family. Let's say, let me pick a family. Let's say the grant or the rule family. Right? From the outside, boy, that's a closely knitted family. No, 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 no. Go marry one of them and go, you go live with one and see what the real deal is amongst each other. You find out this group ain't talking to this group or this one here, believe they're trying to bet. What? But where did this all come from? But well, let's go back. Let's go back to the grandmother who started this favoritism thing. Went down to her children, to her children's children, and so on and so forth. So now you see where Joseph said, he says, listen, God sent me ahead now. He knew what was going to become of y'all in the future generation. So he sent me here through your oppression to preserve you so that you will have a better prosperity or better future generation. So people listening to me now, you can relate to me. There's some of you who don't speak to one another. There are those of you who will buck each other in the store, holding your head down, play like you ain't see one another. You just not stupid at this. Like, like you can live forever. Like you sure you can breathe tomorrow. So you need to look at look 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 at God sparing your life another day to get it right. But look what you decide to do. Mm, God, I thank you for this day, mighty Jesus. Oh, okay. What a I get to spike John today. Oh God, I thank you for giving me the strength this morning to really come up with a new plan to do John in all over again to make life difficult for him 
to call everybody on the phone and tell them how no good he is and his no good wife and his bunch of picky haired children. Oh, Jesus, I just want to give you the glory for giving me the power to oppress these people. That's what you're doing. I know that sounds funny, but that is exactly what you're doing. So again, I'm showing you how much of a hypocrite you are. And tomorrow you will be, by tradition, front and center with the power and having the Holy Ghost spasm every 16 seconds. Every 16 seconds you speak it in tongues. And none of these tongues are showing you how wicked no good you are. None. None of them are convicting you. You're going to drop on the floor, interrupt past the preaching, run your head into the pulpit, back, flip, somersault, doing a half turn, corner twist, all of that. You can go around prophesying to people, Lord, show me a dream about you. And I hear God say this, and you can bend your ear and do all that garbage, but never see your wickedness. Never see your evil, wicked heart. Never. And you will see somebody shut that down. You will see all that Holy Ghost you got. Let that person who you cannot stand show up in that church. And watch how quickly you will sit your behind down and humble yourself all in an effort to show your anger to them. I still got it in for you, mighty God. Lord, please save these people. Please, Jesus, they need to hear this message. You see how much of a hypocrite you are? You see why the word hypocrite means a stage actor, an actress, one who's performing a role? All of that Holy Ghost, huh? All of that Holy Ghost power, all of that conference, thou art loose, break every chain, breaking generational curses. Well, how come yours didn't break yet? Because you, 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 you insist on staying stuck in that position of when that happened in 1985, 1970, 2009, 2020. With the day that happened, you made the decision, I am not moving any further from here. And I'm going to repeat this. Oh, everyone who would give me, who would entertain me, I can repeat this. Like I tell you, I don't care much their challenge with Alzheimer's. I don't care much their challenge with dementia. I don't care what kind of brain problem they have. For some reason, this is what hate does. It could retain that incident and speak it verbatim as if it's happened for the first time. Mighty Lord. These people need to get saved. They need to get saved. So listen to this. Going back to Genesis chapter 50. Verse 15, And when Joseph brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will, uh, will hate us and will certainly will, will hate us and recruit us all the evil which we did unto him. Verse 16 of Genesis 50. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, Listen, not our father. You all are reading this, right? They say, Thy father, because they know that he respected Jacob. But they so afraid of him, they will show all kind of dignity and decorum now. Thy father, your father. Why didn't you say our father? <laughs> Boy, I tell you. He said, thy father did command thee. Remember now what daddy said before he died. Verse 17. So shall he say unto Joseph, forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy fathers. And Joseph wept. When they spoke these things, he's crying because he's like, these people don't get it, man. He's in tears that they believe he's like them. He isn't crying because he wanted to kill them and what they're saying is working on his conscience. No, he's saying these people still don't get it. I am beyond that. Y'all still there, but I'm not there anymore. And y'all are there because of y'all guilt. None of them, even though they say, remember what daddy said, but none of y'all says, be sorry. None of them came and said, we'd be sorry, Joseph. Reuben never said, Joseph, what we did was wrong. Judah didn't say, you know what? What we did was evil. No. Levi, none of them. None. But they're quick to remind you. But you remember what mommy said before she did, right? She said, you must take care of us. In spite of what we do to you. Wow. Wow. Look at this. Y'all see this, right? Look at this. My Lord. Boy, somebody need to talk about these things, yeah? He says here in verse 70, so shall you say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spoke unto him. Verse 18 of Genesis 50. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, 
we be thy servants. I want out of fear. But you will hear an apology yet. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? Am I God to judge you? Verse 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me. Listen, listen. This was a mature heart. But God meant it unto good. Listen. To bring to pass as it is this day to, su to save such people alive. It's got nothing to do with you all. You all did your part. God knew your heart from day one. He knew how uh, hateful, envious. He knew, and he also knew my heart. And all of the right ingredients was there to secure a better future for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now, okay? If you still holding in bitterness after this teaching, you missed the entire lesson of what we did today. The revelation of forgiveness, okay? You are suspending your destiny and that of others when you don't release. You do not see the bigger picture. You are immature. You have a child mind. If every time you see this person, you got to be vindictive and spiteful. And how do you know? What are the signs? Every time they name you, that's why, because what he did, you watch, you watch. I know, hold on, let me look at this application for you on the job now. And their child, their grandchild, put and submit an application to this job. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's Kevin Ewing, grandson. Oh, no, 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 no. We can throw this application in the garbage. Mm -mm. In the garbage. Why are you doing that? Because his daddy, 30 years ago, you hear me? 30 years ago, said something that offended me. 30 years ago. 30 years. That's, let me see. That's three decades. And what you extracted from that is a, a, a an arsenal of revenge and spitefulness that anyone remotely related to this Kevin Ewing you're going to see that they punish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're a prophetess in your church, you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you were saved for how many years again? Okay. All right. And you go to heaven? Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay, then. All right. I, I just want to get those facts straight. I, I see where this going. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying to you? This is what people miss. This is, they, they like, they like performances. They like going to these churches and just dance all day and sow seed and foolishness but never get to the core of these things that will decide their, their future destiny as it relates to eternity. This is the reality of life. So the Bible said very, very clear here, this man maturity spiritually. Yeah, you all did those things. I, I, but listen, like he named his son in, in Genesis 41. He said in verse 50 to verse 52, his son Manasseh, he, and that is the God who forget me, who caused me to forget my, my toils. And the things that happened in my father's house and his son Ephraim, that it reminds him of what God has now blessed him, even in the land of, in a place where people hated him, but now they appreciate him. All of this he, he God allowed to happen. Send him ahead for the future generation of the Hebrew people. So watch this verse 20 of Genesis 50. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not. I will listen, 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 listen what he's going to do. Listen how he's going to reward them for the evil that they did to him. This is what you do. And I'm speaking to those who, who pray in these demonic witchcraft prayers. Child, send it back to sender. Suffer not a witch to live. So you forget all of those other sins would cause you for your lying to be stored to death. And how come you don't, you don't, you don't push those penalties? I just want to show you all the selfishness of people. People are such hypocrites. And, and I used to be one of them. You see, I, I don't leave myself out. I used to be just like some of y'all. You could see everybody else falls. But you can't see your own. You can't see your bitterness. You can't see your hate. You can't see your unforgiveness. All you can see is your justification. Yeah, I did this because they, oh, so they control your life. So only when they do evil, you get back at them. Other than that, you're okay. He said here very clearly, but as for you, verse 20, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass at this day to save such a people. Now, therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you uh -huh, 
and your little ones, and he comforted them and spoke kindly unto them. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived a hundred and ten years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children all the way to the third. Look how God blessing him, mighty God. Look how God blessing him. Why? Because he did it God's way. He did it God's way. And he's showing them by example. I forget those things that happened in the past, man. You're my blood. We come from the same mommy and daddy, man. How could I treat you like a complete stranger? I can't do that. And expect to go to heaven and expect to stand before God and be justified? No. You all grew up together, sleep in the same bed, eat on the same pot. That one woman who took care of all 9, 10, 11 of y'all. And you tell me 11 of y'all can't take care of this one woman? Well, you all pack with devils. You all need to get saved. Think about, think about what you're doing. Think about it. Your brother, y'all grew up in the yard playing marbles together. Huh? Y'all you, you, fight over chicken bone together. And you can't speak to him. He can't speak to you. And you could hold it in for years and tell everybody you meet how no good they are. You realize this is your blood, brother? You realize you all share the same blood? Mighty God, boy, you all, boy, boy, hell too good for you all. All you all hear this? And the reason why I say hell too good, because I'm talking specifically to the believers. You, you who's supposed to be setting an example. Mm -mm. The Bible says God rewarded this man. Not only did he bring to manifestation the things that he saw in his dream, he became that. But he had a good life, so much so that all the way to Ephraim, to the third generation of his, of his children, he saw them. He had a wonderful life. Why? Because he was able to go forward unshackled from the restraints of bitterness, of, of, of anger, of primarily unforgiveness. Very clear. Now, how did all of this happen? Well... What was his guiding force? He loved his brothers. That's the key. See, you, you, you could only retain unforgiveness when you have no love. Your child, I love my sister, so he is a liar. Stop it. Stop it. You're going to rack up enough sins. Don't add no more to it. No. Let's prove this. Let's go to First Peter. Let's go to First Peter chapter 4, verse 8. What does it say? Very clear. And above all things, have fervent charity or love among yourselves. Why? For charity or love, which is the same thing, shall cover a multitude of sins. So I'm reading. Joseph covered a multitude of the evil that his brothers did to him. His love could not allow him to look through the lens of hate, the lens of bitterness. You have no love, ma'am. You have no love, sir. I'm reading here. Let me read it again. First Peter chapter 4, verse 8. And above all things, above everything else, even given to the poor, above all things, have fervent, not just your regular love, fervent or passionate love among yourselves, for love shall cover the multitude. I love my siblings so much that no matter what they do to me, I can let that go. I worry about that. Yeah, it hurt me. I disappointed in them, but I love them. And if they need help, I'll do it. If they, whatever it is, and their children and children, children, that's my blood, that's my family. I love them. That's my friend. But you don't see it that way. No, because you allow your resentment. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. See, y'all only read these scriptures when we're heading in South Cameron. All right? No, but this for your daily life. Get out of here. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We can read from verse 3 to verse 8. And remember, charity here literally means love. 1 Corinthians chapter, I got to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning at verse 3. All right? Because we're showing now what, what was it that motivated this man to do what he did, aside from God directing him. Love. He loved his family. He missed them. You hear a man cry when he was finally. So when he saw his children came to Egypt for help because of the famine, he is finally see his brother Benjamin because they came from the same mother 
and all of his brother Reuben. You could imagine after the years that went by, a man cry and weep on their shoulders. Listen to this. First Corinthians 13 verse 3. And thou, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have no love, it profit me nothing. Listen now, because this is what's going to help you to forgive people. And inject some love in your life. You're hateful, you're bitter. These are the agents in fueling your unforgiveness. Subtract hatefulness, bitterness, remove those things, and watch how quick you will forgive. So verse 4 of First Chronicles, sorry, First Corinthians 13. Love suffer long, meaning it's patient, and love is kind. Love envy it not. Love will not permit you to envy your sisters and brothers, your co-workers. Love will never permit that. So again, Joseph was able to achieve what he did in spite of what was done to him because his foundation was based on his love for his siblings, his love for his mommy, his daddy. He loved them. How could you say you love your sisters? But he's a liar <coughs> if you don't speak to them. Child, I don't speak to them because they don't speak to me. Child, I don't go around there. No, go kick their door down. Come here, sister. Come hug me. Think this is. Come show me some love. My tired is foolishness. Come here, brother. I tired of this. Now you could talk off your mother all you want. I love you, man. I don't know if I can die tomorrow and I can meet a savior. I've been hearing this for years. This, this, this can be true one day. And I cannot continue in life like this. Pick up the phone and call them. Well, tell you, don't call me, but you call them. You can't tell God on judgment day about Jesus. I didn't call them because they didn't call me. Mm. Even in the year of cell phone, you didn't call them. Meaning you didn't have to go home and make the call. You could do it right there in your hand, wherever you was. The Bible goes on to say, it says, Love envy it not. Love vaunted not itself. The word vaunted means it's not arrogant or puffing up itself. Okay? Verse 5 of 1 Corinthians 13. It says, it, love does not behave itself unseemly. Love does not seek her own. It is not easily provoked. It don't think evil. So those out there right now who refuse to forgive, read this chapter because it is saying the things that is opposite to love. And as you can see, if you are a retainer of unforgiveness, then this is you that it's speaking about. You, you, you are upset, you are frustrated, you are mad, you are envious. You, you are all of these things as it relates to the subject of your unforgiveness. Okay, it goes on to say here, verse 6, verse 5, the last part, it says, Love thinks of no evil. Not only do you think the evil, you're constantly speaking about evil. So, 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 Sandra, how are your brother Tom? Tom, my God. Good for nothing dog would not take care of his children. My Jesus. Good. Whoa. And you are prophetess again? And which demon church you go to again? <laughs> See, the, this is reality I'm speaking. You can get mad all you want. One day you got to stand before the same God who you keep lying on. One day the Holy Ghost is going to be a witness against you on the day of judgment. So you got a choice while you live it. You could continue in your unforgiveness and face an angry God, or you could say, you know what? This makes a lot of sense. Let me make it right. Another thing too, when you go to make it right, let me be clear with you right now. You are not going there to see who did who the most wrong. You are, you are uh, let me be clear, write this down, post this on your wall right now. You're not going there to be right in terms of fixing it. You're going there to do what is right. To try that. Go there and fix it. Go there and tell them, Susan, Mary, Kevin, Tom, I was wrong. And be honest, I wasn't just wrong. I said evil things about you. I made evil statements about I lied on you. That's what I did. I will make it right with my God. I will, and whether you forgive me or not, Mary, Tom, Sue, it really don't matter. I just won't clear me. I just won't finally be free. After 40 years of holding this, after 40 years of being anchored to a place of non-progress, all because I refuse to forgive, I cannot live no more. I cannot be in good conscience, continue the rest of my life, knowing that I did not fix the situation with my blood. We came from the same daddy, the same mother. 
We bathed in the same tin tub. We towed water together. And look at us today. Look at us. We got our children divided. We got our grandchildren. Look at the generational curses that we instituted because of our selfishness, because of our unforgiveness. Look how we have polluted our posterity, our future generation. Ain't no devil did this. Ain't no Obed did this. We did it. We took our time through the generation and made up our mind never to forgive one another, never to live peaceably. We couldn't speak no good thing about each other. Anyone who knew us, we got a cadre of evil to speak about that person. Lord, y'all you you better get it right. Y'all better get it right. So next week, I can take this up with part two. I was trying to avoid it, but I got too much scriptures here. But before I go, I will give you this last scripture. This last two scriptures I can give you, and we finish. Matthew chapter 6, okay? Matthew chapter 6, and we're going we're gonna to look at verse 14 to verse 15. Listen to what it says. If you forgive men their trespasses, and this is Jesus speaking, your heavenly Father, this is a condition, will also forgive you. So here is what I get from this. If I do not forgive my fellow man their trespasses, my heavenly Father will not forgive me. Now, I ain't got no English major degree. No. I probably got to call DP and but this but common sense will tell me the opposite is also true here. Okay, let me read it again. For if, Matthew 6 verse 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, listen verse 15, but if you forgive not, listen, not men their, their trespasses or their error against you, neither, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses, Christians. Oh, no, Kevin, no, you read the Bible wrong. That ain't for us. Christians are for the heathen them. Yeah, that's why I say you. You're the heathen. You know what I'm talking about. Scriptures are clear. So let me let me let me go back to what I said earlier. If you are a Christian, which you are not, you're not safe. But Kevin, you can't judge it. No, no, no. The Bible judge you because if you're saying you're a Christian, you're saying you're blood by bought by the blood of Jesus. And I don't know. You you must mean hey Zeus, but not Jesus. And I'm telling you that simply because the scriptures are clear. You could cry Christian all you want. You could speak in tongues all you want. You could somersault, swing on the chandelier, do all the foolishness you do. But if you doing all of that, and your sister, who you refuse to forgive, your brother, your children, whoever, you are a hypocrite. You are a liar. And if you die right now, well, I can tell you where you're going. And I know where you ain't going. You ain't in no heaven. You're going straight to hell. Why? Because the prerequisite to entering the kingdom of God, he has to forgive you. He has to forgive you of your sins. That's the prerequisite to salvation. You repent, and now it's up to God to forgive you. But he tell you what the conditions are. I will forgive you on the condition. You must forgive your brother. So if you never forgave your brother, ma'am, sir, if you never did that, but you're comfortable that you go to church every Sunday. You're comfortable that you are part of the VLB or whatever other organization, Christian. Then all you are is a comfortable hypocrite. You are a comfortable sinner prepared to go to eternal damnation. Because you did not meet the prerequisite in forgiving someone else. So that your heavenly father could, could, could forgive you. Last scripture, Luke 17, 3 to 4. Luke 17. Verses 3 to 4. Listen to what it says. Take heed to yourselves if thy brother trespass against thee. Rebuke him. And if he repent, listen, forgive him. And if the trespass against, if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, then forgive him. In so much word, you have absolutely no excuse. So to all of those fake Christians who will be going to church tomorrow to live a, another round of hypocrisy, you heard it here first, okay? Let me be clear with you. You're wasting, unless you like making the numbers to that place and, or, or use a seed, sower, attic, then that's a different story. Other than that, 
if you are serious about your salvation and you truly want to meet Jesus, then you need to resolve the situations with those whom you feel has offended you or whatever the case may be. As long as there's unforgiveness from there, you need to fix it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your wisdom, your knowledge, understanding. And we thank you for this teaching on the revelation of forgiveness. We thank you for opening up our spiritual eyes to the deeper spiritual implications of the tragedy of what unforgiveness will not only do to us during our tenure on the earth, but by extension, when we transition from time into eternity, the horrible and devastating eternal effects that it will have on us all because we made the decision. Nobody forced us, we made the decision that we will not forgive that person. And the evidence of that, even though we said we did, we always rehearsed the negative things about that person whenever their name came up, whenever somebody spoke about them, anything have to do with them remotely, we are quick to become angry, frustrated, and just spew vile wickedness, which are all evidence of our unforgiveness because your word is very clear. And you said, out of the abundance of a person's heart, or out of the overflow of what's in their heart, then their mouths will tell on them. So by default, they would have revealed to the general listening audience their feeling for that person based on the negativity and vile and hate and bitterness that was spewed when that person's name came up. Father, I pray, just like with Joseph, Joseph named his son Manasseh to say that God has caused him to forget the toil and the wickedness that happened to him of his father's house. And his son Ephraim was a reminder of what God has promised. Now he's living it to enjoy it all because he released what has been done to him. Give these people the ability to release Father God so that they can enjoy their earthly lives. And by the time it's their transition, they'll be able to spend eternity with you. So Father, we bless you. We honor you, we praise you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So next week, folks, we will be back with part two to conclude this teaching on the revelation of forgiveness. God bless you, and you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.